Do you know your risk of experiencing a cardiac event? Today, we're here to help you understand just that. The journey to safeguarding your heart health begins with understanding the potential risks that lurk beneath the surface. While we are all familiar with the traditional risk factors such as high blood pressure, cholesterol levels, smoking, and family history, they don't always paint the complete picture. They are important, no doubt, but sometimes it's the more subtle biomarkers and factors that can help us predict cardiac risks with greater precision. Think of it this way. The traditional risk factors are like the broad strokes in a painting, giving us an overall impression. But it's the specific biomarkers and factors that add the intricate details, refining our understanding of the scene. These details include biomarkers like C-reactive protein, often abbreviated as CRP, which signals inflammation in the body. Then there's lipoprotein A or LPA, a genetic variant of LDL cholesterol that is notorious for sticking to the walls of your arteries and promoting plaque buildup. We also have lipoprotein-associated phospholipase A2, shortened to LPPLA2, an enzyme that, uh, that plays a role in uh, the inflammation of arterial plaques. Homocysteine, an amino acid in your blood, uh, is another detail to watch out for, as high levels can lead to arterial damage and blood clots. And let's not forget about the size of LDL particles. The smaller and denser these particles, the more harmful they are, as they can easily penetrate the arterial lining and contribute to plaque formation. But the details don't stop at biomarkers. There are other factors like age and insulin resistance that can significantly influence your cardiac risk. So you see, Understanding your cardiac risk is like piecing together a puzzle. Each biomarker, each factor, is a piece that brings us closer to seeing the full picture. Identifying these specific biomarkers and factors can help tailor prevention and treatment to your individual needs. And that, dear friends, is the first step towards a heart-healthy future. Let's dive into the specific biomarkers for cardiac risk. These biological markers are like signposts in our body, pointing us to potential health risks. Today, we'll explore five key biomarkers that can help us understand the complexity of cardiac risk. First up is C-reactive protein, or CRP for short. Now, CRP is a bit like a fire alarm. It's a protein that your liver produces when there's inflammation in your body. If you have high levels of CRP, you might have a higher risk of cardiac events. It's like a warning bell, signaling potential problems in your arteries. Next on our list is lipoprotein A or LPA as it's commonly known. This one's a genetic variant of LDL or bad cholesterol. Unlike regular LDL, LLPA has a nasty habit of sticking to your artery walls and promoting plaque buildup. This can lead to atherosclerosis, uh, a condition where your arteries harden due to plaque. While you can't change your genes, um, some lifestyle changes can help manage LPA levels. Now, let's talk about uh, lipoprotein-associated phospholipase A2, or LPPLA2. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? But don't let the name scare you. LPPLA2 is an enzyme that plays a role in the inflammation of arterial plaques. If you have high levels of LPPLA2, you may have an increased risk of heart attacks and strokes. Uh, this makes LPPLA2 um, an outsaran from an important biomarker in assessing cardiovascular risk. Our fourth biomarker is homocysteine. This is an amino acid in your blood. When its levels are high, it can damage your arteries and promote blood clot formation. This can heighten your risk of 
cardiovascular diseases. Homocysteine levels can be influenced by diet, particularly intake of vitamins B6, B12, and folic acid. Finally, we have small LDL particles. LDL, or low-density lipoprotein, is often referred to as bad cholesterol, but not all LDL particles are created equal. Small, dense LDL particles are more harmful than their larger counterparts because they can sneak into the lining of your arteries and contribute to plaque buildup. Understanding these biomarkers can give us a more nuanced picture of your cardiac risk. It's like piecing together a puzzle. Each biomarker is a piece of the puzzle. And when we put them together, we get a clearer picture of your heart health. This can help us tailor prevention um, um, strategies and treatments to your individual needs. But remember, while these uh, biomarkers can provide valuable insight, they're not the only factors to consider. Things like age, insulin resistance, and other health conditions can also play a significant role in your cardiac risk. It's important to look at the whole picture when it comes to assessing and managing your heart health. So that's a wrap on our deep dive into cardiac risk biomarkers. By understanding these, we can take a more proactive approach to heart health, hopefully preventing heart disease before it even begins. After all, prevention is better than cure and knowledge is power when it comes to your health. Beyond these biomarkers, other factors can influence your risk of a cardiac event. Two significant factors that come into play are age and insulin resistance. Let's delve deeper to understand why these elements are critical to consider. Age, as they say, is more than just a number when it comes to cardiac risk. As we add more candles to our birthday cakes, our arteries can become stiffer and more prone to plaque buildup. This doesn't mean that heart disease is an inevitable part of aging, but it does mean that as we grow older, we need to be more vigilant about our heart health. Regular checkups and preventative measures become increasingly important. Age doesn't just signify the passing of years. It's a marker of the physiological changes our bodies undergo. These changes can impact our heart health and increase the risk of cardiac events, making age a critical factor in the overall cardiac risk equation. Next, we have insulin resistance. Now, this might sound like a term straight out of a science textbook, but it plays a significant role in our heart health. Insulin resistance is a condition where the body doesn't use insulin effectively. This lack of efficiency leads to increased blood sugar levels. Over time, this can pave the way for type 2 diabetes. But why is this important for our heart, you ask? Well, insulin resistance can significantly increase the risk of heart disease. This is because high blood sugar levels can lead to damage in the blood vessels, promoting plaque buildup and increasing the risk of heart attacks and strokes. So you see, age and insulin resistance aren't just standalone factors. They are interconnected pieces of a larger puzzle. They interact with the biomarkers we discussed earlier, like CRP, LPA, LP, PLA2, homocysteine, and LDL particle size to shape your overall cardiac risk. So, um, it's a complex web where each strand holds significance. Um, in the grand scheme of things, understanding these factors gives us a more comprehensive view of cardiac risk. It allows us to see beyond the traditional risk factors and delve deeper into what might be influencing our heart health. It's like peeling back the layers of an onion, revealing more depth and complexity with each layer. This understanding is not meant to alarm you, but to empower you. Knowledge 
after all, is power. By understanding these factors, we can better manage them, reducing our risk and taking control of our heart health. It's about being proactive, not reactive, about our well-being. These factors, along with the biomarkers we discussed earlier, come together to form your overall cardiac risk. It's a multifaceted picture, but one that we can influence with the right knowledge and actions. So let's continue this journey towards understanding and managing our cardiac risk. So how do we use all this information to assess your risk? Well, assessing cardiac risk isn't just about focusing on a single biomarker or factor. Rather, it's about bringing together all the pieces of the puzzle. By considering biomarkers like uh, CRP, LPA, LP plateau, and homocysteine, along with factors such as small LDL particles, age, and insulin resistance, we can form a comprehensive evaluation of your cardiac risk. This holistic approach is essential for early detection. It allows us to spot potential issues before they escalate into larger problems which can be a game changer in preventing severe cardiac events. Moreover, by understanding the full picture of your cardiac health, we can tailor management strategies more effectively. We can devise a personalized plan that addresses your unique risk factors, giving you the best chance of maintaining a healthy heart. A comprehensive evaluation paints a full picture of your cardiac risk, allowing for better management and prevention strategies. Understanding your risk is only the first step. The next is managing and reducing this risk. Thankfully, we're not powerless in this fight. There are several proactive measures we can take to influence these biomarkers and lower our overall cardiac risk. Starting with lifestyle changes, a balanced diet plays an integral role. Consuming whole foods, lean proteins, and plenty of fruits and vegetables can help maintain healthy blood pressure and cholesterol levels. Remember, what we eat directly impacts our heart health, so making mindful choices is key. Next comes regular exercise. Physical activities like walking, cycling, or even gardening can boost heart health. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise most days of the week. This helps keep our weight in check, reduces inflammation, and improves blood flow, contributing to a healthier heart. Then there's the issue of smoking. If you're a smoker, you've probably heard it a thousand times, but here's one more. Quitting smoking is one of the best things you can do for your heart. Not only does it lower the levels of harmful LDL cholesterol, but it also increases the beneficial HDL cholesterol. Controlling blood pressure is another crucial aspect. Regular checkups and monitoring can help in early detection and better management high blood pressure often shows no symptoms but it leaves a significant impact on your heart health and let's not forget about stress chronic stress can lead to unhealthy habits that increase cardiac risk so finding healthy ways to manage stress such as meditation yoga or simply spending time with loved ones can make a big difference however sometimes Lifestyle changes may not be enough. In such cases, medication may be necessary to manage these risk factors effectively. Remember, there's no one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to heart health. It's about finding what works best for you under the guidance of healthcare professionals. By understanding and managing your cardiac risk, you take a crucial step toward a healthier heart and a healthier you. Assessing and managing your risk of cardiac event is a vital part of maintaining your health. 
We've delved into the specifics of cardiac risk factors from traditional ones like high blood pressure and cholesterol levels to more detailed biomarkers such as CRP, LPA, LP, PLA2 and homocysteine. We've also looked at the role of small LDL particles, age and insulin resistance in this complex equation. The key takeaway is the importance of a comprehensive risk assessment that takes all these factors into account. It's not about isolating um, one aspect, but rather viewing the whole picture. And remember, knowledge is power. Identifying these risk factors enables us to manage them effectively, be it through lifestyle changes or in some cases medication. Remember, understanding your cardiac risk is the first step toward a healthier heart. So make sure to keep these factors in mind and take steps to manage your risk effectively.